Hey guys, I wanted to talk about time or tempo. Um, when I talk about time, I don't mean a time on a clock and a timed game. I mean um, the number of moves you have versus the number of moves uh, your opponent has. So you could be moved 10 in the game, but realistically you've only had seven moves and they've had 10. Uh, and here's what I mean. It's better if I just show the example. Um, let's go to e4, e5, knight f3, and we'll push d6. All right, this is a common idea of losing moves um, to your opponent. So let's say we just artificially check the king, you know, you say, woohoo, I got to check the king, but did it really do anything? They could kick you out like that, and now you're just left either backing up and then you're kicked around the board and now your bishop is potentially going to get trapped so now you got to make a retreat square and you know after all that black just gained it gained a ton of uh you know a ton of space not a whole lot of ac activity with you know getting their pieces developed but um you just wasted a lot of moves trying to uh get your bishop in the game or let's just say they bring their bishop out right away well now you're left to make a choice are you going to retreat and have having moved the uh, bishop twice in the opening um, when you could be developing something else? Are, are you going to defend it? Um, and, you know, you'll see this a lot in amateur games where they just capture, capture. Well, now you just, you helped black develop. Um, you didn't really do anything. You got rid of your bishop right out of the opening just so you could check the king. So look out to, uh, to see if you're doing that in your own games. Are, are you checking a king artificially just, you know, just for the sake of checking the king? Um, sometimes it's good to do if you're trying to get to a certain square. Let's say I wanted my bishop on a4, so I might come in with that check and, and reroute. Or maybe I wanted to provoke a pawn push for some reason. Um, th so there's, there's a time and place for doing it. But if you notice you're doing that kind of thing, uh, look for, for uh, better moves to develop. So for example, uh, let's say this opening is played uh, myself typically. It's a prophylactic move. It's not really a, um, you know developing necessarily, but I'm just preventing this pin right here in the future. And then I'll start developing my pieces, whether it's bringing this pawn up so the bishop is freed, maybe I'll uh, fianchetto it. Um, speaking of which, um, I'm just going to continue with this opening real quick to show a common theme um, that I see uh, with developing to uh, weird squares. Um, hmm. All right, I'll just go here. All right, so usually when you see this uh, fianchetto structure, all right, the bishop almost always goes to uh, b2, b7, g2, g7. Um, all your fianchetto squares where you should be looking out for... Uh, for checks or, or rooks on the corner. Um, a lot of times you'll see the bishop get developed to weird squares like the um, like a3 or h3, um, h6, a6, where a lot of times it ends up getting kicked around. The, the, usually the point of opening to uh, your pawn to b3 is to get this nice diagonal here. Sure, the, um, like this diagonal, for example, it wouldn't be as good because you, you've got this pawn chain that doesn't look like it's going to be breaking anytime soon. So um, just look to see if you're developing to natural squares. Also something like, I don't know if you've heard the uh, the term knight on the rim is grim. Um, it's the, the knight has, I'll, ju I'll just move here just to show the, um, let's just make it whatever move, just to show what it does. All right, unless you absolutely need to come to the rim, <clears throat> um, you really shouldn't do it, bother doing it unless you're Maxime Vashir Lagrave. There's usually uh, a lot of his games, he play, plays on the rim and somehow pulls it out. Um, you know, he's it, the exception to the rule. But uh, look how many squares this knight has. Can't even go here. It can go to its original square and it can go to uh, b5 and c4. So that's why typically the knight, knights are developed in the center. And then also, like I said about that bishop, developing into its more natural square, right? Look how long this diagonal is. It controls a lot. Eventually, when the game opens up, uh, you know, it could end up attacking the king, especially if you get some kind of, um, you know, you could have a piece sack on uh, h6 that o opens up here, and then you get your, your queen or a rook on this file. So really, the, uh, the bishops do a better job on the longer di diagonals if you're looking for just somewhere to place it in the opening for a, devel a developing move. So... 
Um, yeah, that's my rant on time and tempo. Uh, make sure when you're making moves that you're doing moves that may, that make sense. You're not checking the king just for uh, the sake of checking the king or going to a square that's easily attacked and you're going to get kicked right back and you're giving your opponent an extra move. So if you got any questions, feel free to comment below. And um, if there's something you'd like to learn about next, something you're having trouble with, also feel free to comment. All right, see you guys next time.